Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield anchor reporter Megan Grebner. With us, as always, to talk all things livestock markets is University of Missouri Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. A big slate of reports for us to get through today. Uh, as we get things started, though, let's recap what happened this week in the markets and really some positive news that we haven't had in, in some time, or at least some positive things to talk about. Yeah, certainly when you look across the board, uh, more positive than we've had for a while since you and I've been uh, doing this. So it's, it is good. Uh, if we start on the cattle side, cash cattle were up 90 cents this week. If you look at those feeder cattle auctions this week, they were anywhere from steady to $6 higher. On the future side, the August live cattle futures contract closed down $1.70 and the August feeder cattle futures contract closed down 50 cents this week. On the beef side of the equation, choice box beef price was up 25 cents this week. That's the first time we've been able to say that in a few weeks. Uh, so it's good to see a little bit of stability there. On the hog side, cash barrel and gilt prices were $2.50 higher this week. And we saw that August lean hog futures contract also up $1.35 on the week. The pork cutout value gained $2.25 this week on what was some stronger ham and, and loin prices. It looks like there's been some pretty aggressive procurement efforts on the hog side of things. Uh, is that a good sign that maybe we're starting to at least dip into that backlog uh, in the production system? So maybe we're starting to scratch the surface. Uh, I think we're a long ways from uh, being uh, caught up and it'll take us uh, a while for that. But when you look at what we did this week, USDA's uh, estimating 2.589 million head of hogs to be slaughtered th this week. That's uh, nearly 10% above where we were a year ago at this time and, and almost 3% higher than where we were a week ago. So we're continuing to see some increased numbers there. We need that to keep happening. On the cattle side, uh, USDA is estimating 646,000 head of cattle uh, to be slaughtered this week. That's actually down slightly from a week ago as well as a year ago. Uh, we, we seem to maybe not be getting the same additional pop that we're seeing on the hog side. So you're gonna have to watch on the cattle side, especially when you look at some of the weight data that we have coming out to talk about this week. Are we also less pressured because we seem to have, uh, we're not facing a lot of drought in, in some areas. Uh, does that help us out a little bit if we're not moving in getting into that backlog there as quickly as we may be on the hog side of things? I think we have more flexibility on the cattle side for sure. And that's a, a combination of feed yards and grass available to, to have moved those calves more slowly from pasture into the feed yard. So, so I think that's maybe helped in, in some regards, whereas on the hog side, you know, once we get those buildings full, uh, there's not a lot of uh, excess capacity laying around for us. It's not like we're going to move those hogs out on grass anywhere in here in the U.S. and, and uh, help ourselves. So I think that certainly is, is at play. And you got hog processors that understand uh, the, the backup is serious and, and they're sure, certainly working to try to, to help on that front. Especially with a, another big day that they have slated uh, for, for Saturday. That's right. They're going to need a lot of big Saturdays between now and uh, the end of the year to, to keep us uh, hopefully from getting in a situation where we have more hogs than we can handle. Speaking of uh, more pork and other things that are going on, uh, cold storage, as we look at those numbers, so uh, a decline in total red meat in cold storage this month. Yeah, that's right. If you look at uh, total red meat, uh, 942 uh, million pounds, uh, that's down about 12% uh, from where we were a year ago. That is up slightly uh, relative to where we were last month. You look at some of the individual numbers, total pork in, in cold storage at 600, sorry, 464 million pounds. That's a 25% drop relative to last year. Um, I, I, I think, you know, we're seeing some signs that even though we're growing production, we're moving a lot of product through that supply chain. Beef stocks, on the other hand, uh, rose 5.5% from last year to 428 million pounds. Um, I think there we're seeing maybe a slower uh, recovery on the restaurant side, maybe being partly responsible for what's some larger uh, pork, sorry, beef stocks that we're dealing with. 
livestock slaughter also came out uh, this week as we take a look at those numbers. Um, you mentioned hog weights and, and cattle weights, and, and that's something that we'll notice in this report. Yeah, that's right. So I remind us, uh, as, as we talk about livestock slaughter for June of this year, we had two more weekdays uh, than June of 2019. So as we talk about some of the differences relative to a year ago, that will make a difference. Uh, however, on the weight side, uh, 34 pounds of, of increase in cattle dress weights uh, in June relative to a year ago. Uh, we're actually now seeing that turn back up again, I believe, in, in cattle weights that uh, makes me worried about just the tonnage of beef that we're going to have at the end of the day. And, and talking about that, 146 million pounds of additional beef produced in June uh, this year relative to a year ago. Now, I think, again, we're pushing some of that uh, forward from where we were when we were shut down or slowed down in terms of beef processing. It's still a pretty big number on that front. That's 6.6% more beef than where we were a year ago at this time. Now, just a, a perspective year to date, uh, beef production still down 1.9%. Uh, on, on the pork side, yes, weights still uh, are above year ago level, two pounds above uh, where we were uh, June uh, a year ago. Uh, however, when you look at June total hog slaughter, 11.7% uh, above where we were June a year ago um, for production, 273 million pounds in June above year ago levels almost 13% above June of, of 2019. So uh, we're, we're certainly seeing a, a stark difference relative to what we would have been talking about in that slowdown period of uh, processing, that's for sure. Two big cattle reports out today. Uh, cattle inventory came out as we take a look at those July numbers. Are you surprised or any big surprises in that report? So I don't think we saw a lot of big surprises. It seems to me that we're still in a situation where this is an industry that as they've seen lower prices uh, started that contraction phase and, and it really continues to show up uh, in the July numbers we got out today in the cattle report. If you look at uh, total beef cows, 99.2 uh, is what the report said today. So modest contraction continuing to happen. Uh, you look at all cattle and calves, it came in at 100.1. So we're kind of in this slow uh, decline. I, I guess, you know, if anything sticks out to me, even in a COVID-19 world, we're not seeing a big change in the underlying supply of, of cows that we have out there. And, and ultimately beef, I think, is, is where we're headed. So um, no one has made a significant downward adjustment as a result of COVID-19 on, on the, what we see in that cattle report today. As we look at that, though, does that have, uh, as we look at some of the other factors, economics, weather, those types of things, are, are those the things that we'll continue to watch as we look for this next report to come out then in January? Yeah, Megan, I think so. You know, I, I know we've gotten some dry parts in, in uh, the U.S. that I think could affect cow inventory. Um, I, I think I happily said in what's been a pretty good place in terms of not seeing a lot of dry weather, but I know we're seeing some drought issues in some parts of the country. Uh, and, and of course, economics will continue to play. What are those feeder cattle gonna be worth for uh, the remainder of 2020? And, and does that get folks to change? Cause uh, we're, we're still talking about uh, cattle prices that will be below year ago levels. So I, I think it's gonna make folks uh, look hard and, and we can still see some uh, more uh, large reductions as we look at uh, January numbers that we get here in another uh, half a year. Cattle on feed, the other big report today, uh, as we take a look at those numbers, pretty close to pre-report estimates. Yeah, that's right, which uh, if you remember what we placed just a couple of months ago, uh, we were talking about record low placements. We're now uh, seeing a report that uh, June placements came in at 102.1, so up slightly from where we were a year ago at this time very near the, the pre-report uh, midpoint of, of 103.6. Uh, on feed as of July 1 came in at 99.6. Again, very close to the midpoint. Not, not a lot of uh, variation from what we would have expected uh, in terms of pre-report estimates. If you look at my weight range for a minute, uh, I think the only thing that kind of sticks out to me, uh, if you look at uh, 
those greater than a thousand pounds, uh, they're, they're down slightly in terms of the inventory greater than a thousand pounds uh, relative to, to uh, where we were in, in uh, 2019. So maybe a little bit of good news there that uh, we're, we're lowering some of those uh, higher weight cattle in the feed yard. How much are we watching heifers on feed and how that indicates what we could see in the future? Yeah, you know, I've talked about this uh, for, for a while now as another indication of contraction. If you look at the percentage of heifers on feed that we got out of this report, 38.5% uh, of uh, cattle on feed were heifers. That certainly, to me, suggests that uh, nobody's holding back heifers to try to build the herd at this point. And, and so I think good news that uh, we don't see some expansion on the supply side that we weren't anticipating. I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. There's been some talk about uh, more stimulus for the ag sector. As we take a look at that, how, uh, how do, what do we take away from that with what we do know, which isn't a ton really at this point? Yeah, I, so I think um, one, one thing I like to, to remind us, we've kind of gotten maybe ourselves back to where we, we think we're in some kind of normal and I go, I don't know what happens between now and the end of the year. So getting more money available for agriculture related to stimulus could help if things do turn much worse as some of the current increases in cases uh, might set us back into a, a more shutdown condition. So I, I think from you know that standpoint, there might be some positives of talking about more stimulus related agriculture. It seems like it's going to potentially be similar to how the CARES Act was handled. I know there's a lot of politics between now and the finish line, but uh, it seems to me that uh, is, is where I kind of hear the current uh, situation. So hopefully I fouled that curveball off well. Well, we'll let you go for the week. <laughs> There will definitely be plenty for us to get into as, as more details and more things emerge for this. That's right. <laughs> That's it for us this week as we take a look. Uh, any what, are, what reports are we watching for next week? Yeah, so it's a little slower week. We get to talk about Restaurant Performance Index next Friday, which, again, I'm curious just given uh, the increase in cases, what we see out of that uh, uh, index. Man, because you think about that whole, we talk about this so much, just the demand picture in general, and and really, and we didn't talk about this this week, but a, a fairly, an okay export sales report. We saw China continuing to make purchases. There's still been a lot of ag purchases coming on, and that's really going to play such a critical role in where our prices go from here. Yeah, that, you know, that's right. If I was the other day just looking at some of the, the foot traffic data that, that's out there, and, you know, we were talking about this very nice increase in uh, restaurant traffic and uh, other traffic as we were recovering from COVID-19 cases. But about the end of June, you see that to turn back over and start to, to, to go down again. So I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to, to, to see how that goes forward because we are gonna move a lot of product, uh, beef and pork uh, in terms of production. And we need all the demand we can get. Thank goodness, uh, I think we'll get some help on the export side, but we need domestic demand to hang with us as well. All right, Scott, have a great weekend. We will talk to you next Friday. You do the same, Megan. So for our weekly livestock market update delivered your email box every Saturday morning, visit our website, brownfieldagnews.com. You can submit questions and comments there as well. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, uh, submit questions there as well, and we can ask and throw questions Scott, all the curveballs that you want to do as we go along. Uh, and then also, Brownfield's got a, bu a bunch of great podcasts. Visit our website, brownfieldagnews.com slash podcasts and check them out there in the tractor or in the car. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next Friday. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.